Hi guys, welcome to the Improvement Podcast, hope everyone is doing good. So this podcast I'm going to jump into why your adherence sucks or why you can't adhere to a plan, whatever plan you've got. Uh, first of all, give you a quick update on myself. So I'm currently, I believe, in week 10 or around that in my dieting phase, it's going pretty well. I'm 21 pounds down, maybe 22, something like that. And uh, for the most part, like I said, I'm really happy with how things are going. And I'm really happy to finally be a bit leaner and see the muscle that I've built because when you're in a gaining phase, you can't always see the progress that you're making. It can be quite hard, disheartening sometimes because you're, you're, you don't change weekly regardless how consistent you are. You don't really see too much visual changes when your body fat's higher. So yeah, like I said, it's not super rewarding short term, although it is long term, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's nice to also get some hunger back as well and uh, yeah I'm happy with the amount of muscle I've managed to build over my last gaining phase and uh, I think I've got three weeks left and uh, I've started to see more and more detail which I'm happy with some more veins appearing etc but as for the podcast as I said I'm going to touch on why your adherence sucks or why your consistency sucks when it comes to training nutrition all that sort of stuff so First of all, what I want to touch on is diet. So I'm going to touch on diet, then training, and then just some general guidelines of why you might not be able to stick to the plan. So first of all, it's convenience. So when it comes to your diet, you want to make sure it's convenient. And what I mean by this is you want to make sure the foods that you're eating daily are easy to prepare. You don't want to be eating foods that take, like I don't know, half an hour each meal to make if you're going to be out of the house for work and you're just don't want to commit to take like taking ages to make your food daily there's nothing wrong with making it convenient so in terms of how to make it convenient batch cook your food so you don't have to cook one meal at a time if you're cooking chicken and rice do it for the whole seven days then you've got your food set out for the week and you've got that meal ticked off that's you one step closer to hitting your food goal and in terms of other foods like I said, just make sure it's not going to be super, super awkward to eat consistently if you want to have some structure of your diet because, like, nobody wants to be spending, unless you obviously love cooking, nobody wants to be spending ages in the kitchen. And if it takes ages to make, you don't enjoy cooking, then you're not going to be able to stick to it long term in terms of cooking it. So make sure whatever you're doing is convenient for yourself. Also meaning you're picking meals when they're convenient to eat, meaning, like, don't be taking something that is really, really awkward to carry to work, or you're just be like, I can't be bothered taking that in today, I'll just get a McDonald's, that sort of thing. Sounds silly, it sounds really small, but all these little wee things you can do add up, and I'm a big believer of that. Next up, make sure your diet's enjoyable. So, some people think just because you're eating healthy it means it has to be bland, it has to be just unenjoyable it's not nice there's tons of ways to make your food taste nice and there's tons of just ways to spice up your food uh, like uh, using plenty of condiments using sauces that sort of thing eating foods that you enjoy so you don't just have to eat bland chicken and rice there's tons of different proteins you can eat carb sources so play about with your foods have what you want because if you enjoy your diet it's going to be easier to stick to so it doesn't have to be bland. That's something I got a bit lazy with in my last gaining phase. I started just going for foods that are just, just convenient. And yes, you obviously want your diet convenient, but you don't want to just be in like chicken and rice three, three times a day. I think there's benefit from having quite a few protein sources. The reason being is you're going to get different nutrients in each. So what you get in like red meat, you might not get in chicken, for example. So it's good to have a variety in your diet and again if you have a variety of meals in your diet you're going to be easier to stick to them consistently because it's not going to get boring, they're not going to be bland and you'll enjoy it more. And also make sure it's not super sh- restrictive so maybe if like you're let's say like someone who's competing in bodybuilding they're doing like a like 25 week diet that's different from someone who's never stepped in the gym before they are classed as extremely obese they don't have to do that sort of commitment. What they can literally do is switch a pizza for a burger if it's like 500 calories less, that sort of thing. So make sure that 
you have some sort of sustainability to it because if it's not sustainable, if you can't do it long term, you're probably not going to get progress long term. So yeah, just make sure whatever you're doing, you can stick to it. It's quite, it's not going to be really restrictive. And uh, as for training, first thing I should say is make it enjoyable. So when you're a beginner, yes, you obviously want to get results. You want it to be easy to stick to. However, you want to make it, you want to also make sure it's effective. So it's a balancing act between the two, one being making it enjoyable and two being effective. So, But don't don't feel like you can't do like a few wee things that you just like, even if you know it's not the best exercise to grow muscle. For example, let's say you love doing a barbell bench press. It doesn't grow your chest. However, if you go to the gym excited to barbell bench press every chest day or push day or upper body day, then I'm not, I wouldn't take away from someone's program. If that's going to make the difference between then sticking to their training or not going to the gym that day, I know which one will be more optimal. So yeah, do stuff you enjoy. Add in wee supersets that you like, drop sets for your arm training if you like the feeling of a good pump, that sort of thing. Because, like I said, if it's enjoyable, you'll stick to it. And then when you get more and more consistent to the gym, you develop discipline, you take your goals more seriously, you become more passionate about it, then you can make sure that you're making it like uh, also effective. You can put more of a focus towards it being effective because you'll probably like it more if you are like hooked into the gym or you have bigger goals when it comes to training. So next up, make it convenient. When it comes to training, if uh, you have a lot of commitments on some days of the week, then work your training around that. So yes, training's got to have some sort of sacrifice, but it doesn't mean you can't shuffle it around what days are like suitable for yourself. So let's say you like to go out on a Friday night. Not that's going to be in line with your goals, but you can still move your training so you're doing it before Friday or on Sunday so that you're not going to miss a session being rough. Make sure what you, whatever you're doing, you can stick to it long term in that aspect so yeah if it you could argue let's say you train monday tuesday wednesday thursday yes it's not going to be effective on paper but if you know you're drinking friday you're gonna not have time to train before you go out you're gonna be well rough friday to sunday it's still better getting four training days in right next to each other than getting no training days in or one or two so think about what's better not what's the best so i think that's somewhere where a lot of people mess up they think what's What's going to get me to my goals the fastest? What's going to get me to the goals like my, the quickest and it'd be most effective? Whereas you should think, how can I improve, make sustainable habits and changes long term? Because yes, you might be able to cut your calories and like be really restrictive for a week, but if you fall off plan after that, then it's not going to do much good. So yeah, make sure the days you train are sustainable and put we put we methods into your training to make sure that you're not spending too long in the gym if you don't like spending long there. For example, like I said, do supersets, which are just doing like one exercise into the other, or drop sets, which is a way to get more work done in a shorter period of time too. Or yeah, take shorter rest periods. You might think, oh, I need to rest five minutes in between my squats, but if you aren't going to get all your session in or you aren't going to go to the gym because you don't want to be there that long then it's not going to be sustainable again so just make sure you're doing it taking like a time during your sessions that suits yourself that you can stick to next up make sure your training's in line with your goals so if like let's say you love like uh we'll go with like trying to improve your fitness you love cardio if you're gonna be like weight training five times a week, it's probably not gonna be sustainable if you've got no cardio in it and you hate weight training. So obviously it depends on your goals. Let's say you want to build muscle, then cardio is probably not the best idea. But if you can tailor your training in line with what you want to achieve, because you're gonna stick to it. Usually people don't want to stick to something or they don't stick to something because it's not in line with their goals or values. And this gets me to the next category, just some general tips. So make sure you're doing something that's in line with your values. Let's say, let's say, 
I will just put a. Uh, I'll just use an example. Let's say someone was fifty year old. They they are really overweight. Again, like let's say they're extremely obese. They want to lose weight so they can watch their children grow up or watch their grandchildren grow up so that they can have independence say when they're older so they can have good health and live longer that's what they value link it to your goals so link training to being able to live longer to being able to see your grandchildren grow up to be able to have good health to be able to have independence so yes this might seem far-fetched but the same applies let's say you just are really low in self-confidence you are just really insecure about your body use that fuel that will help you stick to it so think this step is going to move me towards having a body i'm confident in this step's going to push me towards having a body that i can take my top off when i'm at the beach or something like that just those we like just highlighting the importance of hitting your goals hitting your training will go a long way so do that and highlight when you do like make progress highlight when you do well so if you are like progressing in the gym highlight that to yourself don't just think oh this one exercise doesn't go well think i added 2.5 kilos to the bar today i managed to stay consistent for the whole week it could even be i didn't get five mcdonald's this week i got three that's progress highlight progress take pride in it and uh, make sure you, yeah just make sure you know you're moving forward when you are because that will just help with your consistency massively next up have a routine in place so with the gym there's not always going to be times when you want to go and it's important just to try and have a routine and try and make it a bit second nature like brushing your teeth because if you can make it second nature then you're going to be more likely to stick to it uh, for example let's say every day after work you go straight to the gym that means you won't be getting home you won't sit on the couch you'll be like oh i'm comfy now and then patch it if you have a routine you know exactly when you need to go and what you need to prepare to be able to go and then it just makes things much easier you don't have to do i saw you don't have to train at a time that's inconvenient for yourself just having a routine and making it almost robotic will do you a lot of good in that aspect and next up, don't rely on motivation. So motivation something that oh, this this post is absolutely butchered on Instagram. You see it all the time, or I do anyway, when it comes to people with fitness pages. But it's true. Like You're not always going to be motivated. You're not always going to want to go to the gym. But remember your goals. If you want to hit your goals, you need to do what it takes to hit them. So there's not like there's always an excuse to make like everyone's got an excuse the most consistent people in the like in the world at any sport they're never gonna want to train all the time like the amount of like times where like i could uh i don't mean this in a smug manner talking about myself but the amount of times i could be like i'm not gonna go to the gym it's not convenient today is i could i couldn't count on both my hands like it there's so much just excuses you could make so much reasons you could just say i'm not going to go today but it's, it's those times when you can go to the gym then that when you are motivated will be much easier and most of the time in terms of motivation motivation comes when you're working towards your goals when you're improving you then will pick up some motivation along the way if you're consistent and then you see progressions that will get your that will get you motivated so just try and stick with it at times you aren't motivated and it will help massively so yeah, sometimes you just need to suck it up to summarise. And lastly, use things like lists, long negotiables. I'm sorry, not non-negotiables, sorry. And what I mean by this is write down on a bit of paper, like I've got beside me, I've got a whiteboard behind me if you're watching this on YouTube, and write down all you have to achieve. Tick it off when you achieve your goals. If it's, like it doesn't have to be, again, massive goals. It doesn't have to be losing 20 pounds. It could be only having like free carryouts in the week. It could be going to the gym that day. It could be making your food for the day. Tick off. Write down everything you want to achieve. Tick it off. That will really that will release dopamine, which is like the pleasure hormone, the happiness hormone. 
not the happiness hormone, that's something else. But like the hormone you get when like you like people smoke a cigarette. I feel like they're addicted to smoking or that. And that will just make you crave doing more and more of it. So yeah, write a list, tick it off, and that will help with motivation as well. And you'll have a sense of accomplishment, you'll enjoy that feeling and you'll just crave it more and more and do it again and again. So yeah. Hope some people found this helpful. So just kind of try and summarize the main points of this episode so make it convenient whatever you're doing with your diet with your training with your routine make sure you enjoy it and make sure it's in line with your goals and values so make sure you highlight what it is you want to achieve and what it takes to achieve it and keep linking it keep keep associating all the benefits of losing weight to yourself write them out on a bit of paper even and they that will just help you see the importance of it because if something's really 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 high on your values what you value more than anything you will do it so yeah i hope everyone enjoyed the episode if you did share on your story leave a review or rating or like whatever you're watching on and uh, again thank you very much for listening